Hello viewers, Whidbey Ben here with another Bronco video. Today we're going to talk about toads. RVers affectionately refer to their tow behind vehicles as toads. In order to take a Ford Bronco and make it into an appropriate toad, we're going to have to convert it into a legal and safe trailer. This involves connecting trailer lights and also, because the Bronco is over 4,000 pounds, it's going to need to have an auxiliary braking system installed as well. This way, when the RV brakes, the Bronco will also apply its own brakes to slow the combination down. This reduces the amount of work the brakes on the RV have to do to safely slow down the combination. Today, we're going to be installing some basic trailer lights and for an auxiliary braking system, we're going to be installing a Demco Stay and Play Duo. This will be integrated into the vehicle's brake system so that all we need to do to switch it into trailering mode is to flip a switch and activate the braking system. When equipped with the modular steel bumper, the Ford Bronco is well suited to become a towed vehicle. The modular steel bumper has these very beefy recovery, I guess you could call them D-rings, and <clears throat> there are companies that manufacture simple adapters that allow you to attach a tow bar uh, directly to these uh, tow rings here, so you don't have to install a base plate. So. When you're using this modular steel bumper, the only thing that you'll see that gives away the vehicle as a toad is the connectors here. This is for the uh, breakaway switch, and this is for the umbilical to the towing RV, which transmits the taillight signals and also 12 volt charging power. This also transmits uh, information regarding the brakes. I manufactured a mounting plate for the breakaway switch and umbilical socket out of some scrap 3 16 inch aluminum. There are two bolts on the underside of the modular bumper that are 4 inches apart. This plate mounts directly onto those two bolts. There's a lot of moving parts to this Demco stay and play auxiliary braking system. Let's take a look at what comes in the box. We've got a nice instruction manual here that uh, details all of the steps for installing this. <clears throat> there is the um, actual operating unit. This part generates the air pressure necessary to operate the brakes. That works in conjunction with a uh, little cylinder here that attaches to the brake pedal and that's all controlled by this uh, proportional uh, brake controller that interfaces with all the other parts it also comes with this is an optional accessory here um, this is a wireless coach link so that when the brakes are activated in the Bronco, you'll be able to see on the dashboard of the RV without actually having to run a separate wire up to the RV for that kind of notification. There's all sorts of small bits and pieces, and it also comes with, um, looks like wire loom, air hose, and uh, vacuum hose. Depending on the engine that you have, you may or may not need to use the vacuum hose. We happen to have a 2.7 liter V6 in this Bronco. It happens to have an electric brake assist system, so we won't be using any vacuum hoses. If you have the 2.3 liter base, uh, a 2.3 liter uh, four cylinder engine, then you will probably have to use the uh, vacuum hoses and figure out how to splice that in. The engine compartment with the 2.6 liter V6 
is pretty crowded, so there's not an awful lot of free space to insert the operating unit for this stay-and-play auxiliary braking system. But there does happen to be a little bit of space above the fuse box here that we'll see if we can get that to work for us. If we attach it to the fuse box lid in this location here, there is adequate clearance to get the hood closed without uh, damaging the operating unit, and it'll be reasonably secure. We'll also still be able to remove the fuse box lid, although it'll be a little bit awkward with that there, but it should be doable. Here is the operating unit mounted onto the lid of the fuse box. Uh, we use some uh, <clears throat> half inch uh, number eight uh, bolts and uh, there's not a lot of clearance inside here so where you position these uh, fasteners you need to make sure that it's not directly over a fuse and this just happened to work out that uh, there's an empty space underneath this particular spot and another empty space under this spot here so we don't have to worry about those short circuiting anything <clears throat> this is on there pretty firm we also applied a little bit of stick-on foam to this part of the operating unit. This is going to sit on a frame, um, a frame rail <clears throat> that goes around the outside of the hood area. This will just help reduce any um, vibration and noise. So we'll just put this in position here. We need to slide the um, operating unit underneath the um, fender here. Then line up the edges of the fuse box and that snaps down all three of the snaps for the fuse box. So that's in there nice and secure. There's no rattling and we can still get the fuse box, uh, fuse box lid out. Let's pop the fasteners here and lift the lid. That last one. And we have to pivot it up and then scoot it in and then we can get inside the fuse box. So this location looks like it's going to work out all right. The other advantage to this location is there is a um, grommet right underneath here where we're going to be passing wires from the engine compartment into the uh, pat into the driver footwell so we can make our uh, electrical connections the 2.7 liter v6 engine comes with an electronic brake assist so there is no uh, vacuum hose that needs to be attached for this particular application we need to remove this check valve from the unit and reverse it and jam that back in there. <clears throat> and that's really all we end up having to do with the uh, check valve. We've got our breakaway switch mounted onto this plate that's uh, attached to these two uh, bolts that are on the underside of the uh, corner piece of the steel modular bumper. Now let's take a look at wiring up the um, six pin plug and creating a wiring harness. To electrically connect the Bronco to the towing RV, we're gonna create a custom wiring harness. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna start with a uh, four-way trailer wiring harness. This is a wishbone style from E-Trailer, and it's a very basic, uh, it's got a four-way flat plug on one end, and it's got all the wire that we'll need. When we tie into the tail lights in the back of the Bronco, we're going to use these diodes to protect the uh, Bronco's circuits from the inputs coming out of the RV. And we're going to be using components from this um, seven to six wire, seven to six wire connector kit, which comes with a nice cable. So the seven pin end will plug into the back of the RV, while the six pin end will plug into the front of the Bronco. This uh, six pin connector tends to be more traditional for using, um, for plugging into toads. 
This uh, kit also comes with the uh, socket that we'll be wiring everything into. And this will be mounted on the front of the Bronco. In addition to the standard four-way trailer wiring, we're gonna want to bring a charging circuit from the RV to keep the Bronco's battery charged up. So we're gonna add some 12 gauge wire and a waterproof fuse holder so that we can keep the Bronco charged up while the RV is towing it. The connections that have to be made with the plug are explained quite clearly in the directions that came with the plug. One big trap to avoid when you're putting together this plug is to make sure that you run all of the wires that are gonna be used through the rubber collar first. Then you can do the connections to the plug and then the collar will slide over the connections. So make sure you put this in line since we're gonna be using the six uh, pin plug in the front of the Bronco, we're not gonna need this four flat connector. So the first thing we're gonna do is just cut that off. I'll leave a little bit of wire so that I can reuse that plug in the future if I ever happen to need that. So we're gonna be starting with just the bare ends of this trailer wire. So we're gonna start by passing all of the wires through the waterproof um, shield here. Just so we don't forget to do that. Now we'll uh, start by separating these wires and uh, we'll strip uh, about a half inch off of each end here. These tail light wires have a um, stop and turn signal and a uh, running or parking light uh, together for each uh, tail light. So we'll just separate these apart. And one thing we're gonna do on this end here is we're gonna combine these two brown parking signal wires together before we insert them into the plug here. And they go into the tail marker slot on here, which these are actually marked on the back here. It says TM. We'll back the screw out. Now we'll insert these wires and tighten up the screw. That's a nice mechanical connection there. Now we're going to go um, left and right turn and stop signals here. This says the green is the right side. And to give me a little extra purchase on the connection, I'm going to strip a little extra length off of here. Then I'm going to back double the wire back on itself just to give me a little more copper to insert in to the opening. So the green wire is the right turn signal. Combined stop and turn. Back to screw out. Insert the wire. And then we'll tighten that screw up. And now we'll do the yellow left turn and stop signal here. It's nice that these are all labeled on the back side of this particular socket. And we have the ground wire, which is a white wire. One of these connectors is for the electric brake output, but we're not going to be using that in this particular application. We will be using the center connector, though, for the charge um, charge line, 12 volts from the RV to keep the Bronco battery charged up. We're going to go with a heavier wire for that. This is a 12-gauge uh, wire. It's a much heavier wire there. Make sure you get all of these through that collar. 
this one was going through the wrong direction, actually. Good thing that is a short piece of wire. Insert that 12 gauge piece of wire. I'm gonna cut that a little bit shorter, I think. Oh, no, it fits in there. All right, so now we can see that we've got our um, left and right turn signal wires entering into the back of the socket. There is clearance between those and the 12 volt um, power feed. On this end, we've got our ground wire and our parking lights. And these are a long ways away from the 12 volt charge line. So it looks like this ought to work just fine. Slip the waterproofing collar on there. All right, now that we've finished up our socket here, I gathered up all the wires here and temporarily lashed them together with tape. And uh, <clears throat> we're gonna run, uh, straighten out all of the trailer wire. I don't think we're gonna use all 35 feet of this, but uh, taking the end and tied it to a cord and I used a um, fish tape to go from just behind the battery compartment down behind the grill and headlight and to the area uh, here below the modular bumper where we can pull the wires through. So I'll just come up here to the battery compartment. Grab that cord, and we'll just start pulling this wire through. It's, it's going through the bracket for the, our plug. And I'll just kind of gently guide it up here. So here we can see the wire coming up in behind the battery compartment. So we'll just pull all of this wire through. Before we finish pulling it all the way through, I'm gonna encase this with some split loom um, organizer or protector to uh, protect the wire where we can't see it. Don't forget to also include the uh, breakaway switch wire wiring <clears throat> uh, with the wiring harness as you pull it um, up uh, into the engine compartment. Before connecting up any uh, electrical <clears throat> accessories, we're gonna need to disconnect the negative uh, ground terminal from the battery, which is right here. This is a 10 millimeter nut, and we'll just undo that and disconnect the um, negative terminal. So that's the negative terminal disconnected. I'm pulling the split loom off of the <clears throat> wiring harness that we've pulled through from under underneath the battery compartment. And <clears throat> it appears that the uh, ground terminal ring for the uh, trailer wiring harness just happens to be right here, which is very convenient for us. So that's this white wire here. So we'll be able to attach this white wire to the uh, ground terminal, the accessory ground terminals right at the battery. So here we've added the uh, ground terminal from the trailer wiring harness uh, directly onto the uh, accessory terminal for the ground at the battery. We also conveniently have just enough wire here for the 12 volt uh, charge line. And we've got our breakaway switch wires here um, right next to the Demco um, <clears throat> operating unit where they're going to need to be wired in. And uh, we've got plenty of uh, the trailer signaling wire to go in through the firewall and then on back to the taillights.
We have finished our 12 volt charging line by splicing on <clears throat> a waterproof uh, fuse holder and um, ring terminal. So this can be attached to one of the accessory uh, batter po battery power terminals. And uh, whenever the RV is running and sending power uh, through the trailer connection, it'll keep the Bronco's battery charged up. Now we're doing the electrical connections for the uh, Demco braking system. Here we've got a uh, fuse holder uh, with a um, quarter inch uh, ring terminal. And we've got that spliced to the orange wire from the breakaway switch and the brown wire from the operating unit. Here's the uh, black wire from the breakaway switch and the blue wire from the uh, operating unit. <clears throat> the uh, Bronco does not have an active uh, brake light switch. When the ignition is off, the, uh, there is no brake light signal at the switch. So <clears throat> we have to use an alternate wiring method and we're gonna run this blue wire inside the um, firewall to uh, activate the um, uh, brake light switch function. We're going to be able to run the wiring for the trailer, the trailering lights, um, behind this panel here, right behind the speaker. You just have to pull this trim out. And there's a bunch of wiring bundles back there too, but just underneath here, there's plenty of room in this channel. And then there's a wiring channel uh, under the scuff plate here, which then if we pull up the side trim off the side back here, it'll take us all the way back into the rear wheel well, where um, you can see the brake controller that we installed earlier. So um, this will keep the um, trailer lighting wires inside and away from any harm underneath the frame. Inside the driver's footwell, there is a convenient boot in the firewall that even has a dedicated spot on it here for running additional accessory wires uh, from the engine compartment into the uh, footwell. This is a view from inside the engine compartment to that same uh, grommet down here. So we're gonna pull the wires through that grommet and into the driver foot well. Here is a fish tape pulled through the grommet in the firewall. We're preparing to pull things through the firewall uh, when we do this, we want to only have to do that once, so I'm including the air hose, the uh, trailer lighting wires here, the green and brown and yellow and brown wires, and then the red, blue, and black wires from the Demco operating unit. So we'll attach those to the end of our fish, and we'll pull it through that grommet in the... Here's the wires and air hose running through the grommet. We'll seal both sides with silicone. Last mechanical connection here is we need to take the air hose here and just plug it into the side of the Demco operating unit. And that just has to jam in there. And then we're pretty much, we'll need to uh, connect it our fuses here. There are no fuses in the fuse holders yes, just yet. We'll wait until everything is done and then we'll put the uh, fuses in the fuse holders. We have run the green, yellow, and brown trailer lighting wires through the door sill and uh, behind the paneling on the driver's side to the back of the Bronco. Now that we've pulled wiring through the uh, firewall, we're gonna work on the uh, actual brake controller. This is the uh, brake controller, and it is a proportional brake controller that's mounted inside the vehicle. Uh, this needs to connect to the 
trailer lighting wiring. So to facilitate that, I've uh, made two three-way splice connectors here that allow us to tap into the trailer wire, <coughs> trailer lighting wires for the left and the right side. And um, we'll tap in here and this end will go back to the uh, actual lights in the back of the vehicle. I mounted the G-Force controller on this uh, interior panel. There is a, a speaker grill here, but fortunately there's just enough clearance in the center of that grill that if you use a half inch or a shorter fastener that it doesn't touch the speaker. There also needs to be a little bit of clearance here so that you can open up the hood. And there is a grounding bolt located just above and behind the speaker grill. Okay, we've completed all of our connections underneath the dash here. We've got our green and yellow wires from the uh, trailer wiring, <coughs> red and black wires between the control unit and the operating unit. We've got uh, ground wires and um, <coughs> We've connected the blue wire from the operating unit to the red wire of the wireless uh, coach notification module. And uh, another, <coughs> we split the ground wire here also to go to the coach notification unit and the G-Force uh, brake controller. So we'll just tidy these all up and tuck them out of the way. I put the wireless coach link transmitter up on the A-pillar with some sticky tape. The last step of the uh, internal installation is to mount the operating cylinder to the brake pedal, which uh, you do by uh, clamping it to the brake pedal. I did insert a safety screw to prevent it from uh, slipping on, on its clamp position, but it's pretty tight there. Then you need to screw an anchor into the firewall right here. Um, I did take the precaution of cutting some of the uh, sound deadening material so that I could make a direct metal to metal contact here. And be careful not to over torque this because it's just being uh, threaded into sheet metal in the firewall. We also want to make sure that this cable isn't, isn't too tight. So there's just a little tiny bit of slack to it there when you uh, set the... Uh, set screw down here to secure this uh, operating cable. I did opt to add a reinforcement plate to the firewall attachment. So let's go back to the back of the Bronco. We've got this driver side trim panel pulled away and <clears throat> where the more challenging parts of the install is going to be splicing the uh, trailer light wires into the tail lights of the Bronco. And if we go inside, this cable here goes to the tail light assembly down there. And <clears throat> it, it takes a little bit of research, but with a volt ohm meter, I was able to isolate which wires go to the various tail lights. So um, <clears throat> this connector disconnects right up in here. Pull that off. And what we're gonna do is we're going to splice into the wires here so that the splices will be sheltered inside the vehicle instead of outside. And we're gonna splice a diode in to protect the vehicle's <coughs> electrical system from uh, trailer inputs from the RV. <coughs> we have two wires that I've tracked down, the blue and gray wire here and then there's a blue and green wire which is right down there those are our um, two wires for <clears throat> the uh, parking lights or running lights and for the stop and turn signal we're going to be using these uh, Hopkins uh, trailering diodes to uh, protect the uh, vehicle from the 
electrical inputs while trailering. And uh, this uses a uh, quarter inch uh, spade, male spade connector. So we're gonna splice some uh, female disconnects onto all of the wires. Here I've got the uh, blue and gray wire isolated. That goes to the third pin from the right on the top row here. <clears throat> so I'm gonna cut that and put some uh, uh, female disconnects onto that. So this is what the diode looks like in place. The output end goes to the LED light fixture. The input end connects to the part that connects to the body harness. So the signals coming from the vehicle go this way through the diode and to the tail light. We're gonna do the same thing with the blue and green wire, <clears throat> which is the uh, stop and uh, turn signal indicator wire. So here we have the diodes installed. <clears throat> the uh, blue and gray wire is the running light or parking uh, light or uh, tail light. And the blue and green is our um, stop and turn indicator signal. Now we're gonna take the uh, wires from the RV and uh, we're gonna uh, splice those. So we're gonna add some uh, female disconnects to these. We'll be using the uh, yellow and brown for the driver side and the green and brown on the passenger side. So here's our diodes installed and hooked up to the uh, trailer wires from the RV. The yellow wire is the uh, left turn signal and combined stop signal. And the brown wire is the running lights or tail lights. Now we'll just uh, tidy this up, plug this connector back in, and then we'll repeat this on the uh, passenger side using the green and brown wires. I'm gonna run the uh, passenger side uh, lights <clears throat> Underneath this piece here, there's actually a little bit of space under there, but I'm going to run it through some split loom to protect it because there's some potentially sharp edges here and here. Then uh, this, this wire will run underneath the trim piece that snaps across the bottom, and that'll get us to the passenger side. On the passenger side, the parking light or the running light is still a blue-gray conductor over here on the passenger side. The uh, stop and turn light is a blue and violet wire. So the color code is a little bit different, but that's because this is the passenger side versus the driver side. So we'll get these spliced up just like we did the other side <coughs> at the diodes. Due to the uh, subwoofer being located back here, this is kind of a tight fit. Um, you have to be real careful with the wire, with the wire lengths to get it all um, to plug in together, but we got it done. We'll plug this thing back in and uh, tidy things up. Now that we've uh, completed our tail light connections, we've reconnected the negative uh, post to our battery, and uh, we'll need to test our trailer lights to make sure that they're all working properly before we start testing the auxiliary braking system. So now we're gonna see if our wiring worked out okay. Uh, we've got the tail lights connected to the RV and the Bronco's tail light should mirror the RVs. We'll go and test it out. Stepping on the brake pedal in the RV, we have the brake lights come on. Now coming off the brakes, we have the running lights. We have the left turn signals. We have the right turn signals. and we have the hazard lights. So we have full function of our trailering lights. And finally, we're gonna insert a uh, 20 amp fuse into the uh, auxiliary braking system and a uh, 30 amp fuse into the uh, battery charging circuit. So our wiring is all now live. So viewers, that's what it takes to set up your Bronco as a toad. Stay tuned for another video where we'll show you how to hook up the Bronco and actually do a flat tow with it. I hope you found this video to be helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. Until next time, this is Woodby Ben signing off. Bye-bye.